Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the second video of our serverless SQL security chapter in the Databricks Security Best Practices series. Today, we'll be talking about how we secure our serverless compute plane and apply multiple layers of isolation to achieve defense in depth and minimize risk to the system. My name is Sylvie Tofan, and I'm working as a solutions architect specializing in Databricks' enterprise platform and serverless capabilities. As part of this series, I've been working closely with my colleague Arun from our security field engineering team in order to bring you the content you'll see over the next 10 minutes or so. As with our previous video, if you have yet to browse through our security and trust center, I highly recommend you check that out. It contains valuable information that platform and information security professionals should be aware of when evaluating Databricks security stance. We strongly believe that Databricks serverless SQL helps you be confident that your sensitive data is protected. This video will build upon the lifecycle of a SQL query and dive deeper into how we keep information secure while it's running in the compute plane. A reminder from last time, we discussed the multiple hops that the SQL query goes through as it is submitted by a user in the control plane using the UI or the API, how it makes its way to the serverless compute plane and fetches data from customers' storage. If you want to learn more information about this flow, please make sure to check out our previous video. Today, we'll focus on some of the security mechanisms in our control and compute planes more specifically. We'll start from the Databricks control plane, where we previously have discussed the six layers of authentication and networking controls that we employ to secure the service. This time, we'll dive deeper into the serverless compute lifecycle process before moving on to the um, compute plane. If we consider the full serverless VM lifespan, this begins with a stage called pre-assignment, where Databricks fills the unallocated pool with cloud instances from the cloud provider. This is to ensure that we have VMs available on hand to meet the demand from our customers. As soon as a customer requests compute, we move into the assignment process to enable instant compute, where one or more unallocated hosts get assigned to a cluster and get ready for customer workloads. And at runtime, this compute is fully available to receive instructions from the control plane and is managed by the serverless compute manager. But let's find out more about these stages and the levels of security available in each one of them. In its serverless design, Databricks maintains a fleet of unallocated VMs that can quickly be assigned to customers. As VMs are assigned, new VMs will be requested from the cloud provider to refill the pool of unallocated VMs. For VM creation, the serverless compute manager, which is an internal service in the control plane, will request that a VM be created by, by the cloud provider. The AMI used for this VM is essentially identical to the one used for other Databricks VMs. It's created through the same build process used for other AMIs. It's subject to the same hardening and vulnerability management controls, just like the rest of Databricks. Once the VM launches, it will begin to start the Databricks runtime. It will not be ready to be used as this stage, um, as at this stage, it's not assigned to a customer dedicated resource. So several services will await assignment before fully starting. During registration, a VM connects to the registration method on the serverless compute manager to be added to the unallocated pool and await assignment. The connection is mutually authenticated. The TLS certificate used for the serverless compute manager is securely distributed via the AMIs allowing the VM to authenticate uh, the API. These processes of verification and identity guarantees are first-party and third-party uh, penetration tested, like is the rest of our serverless uh, design. And once the VM registers, the serverless compute manager will add the VM to the unallocated pool. Uh, we have mechanisms in place that do not allow to re-register the same VM and avoid replay attacks. Assignment occurs when a Databricks user requests a new serverless compute resource. The serverless compute manager will assign one or more unallocated VMs that are ready for assignment to the new compute resource and provide them with the compute resource configuration package, which has the configurations and credentials that would allow the compute resource to finish starting up. All communication happens over private link or the cloud service provider's backbone, and governance controls can be put in place and applied to these serverless resources. 
In parallel, the serverless compute manager will also configure a new security group, which we'll talk about uh, in a minute, uh, for the new set of VMs that will not allow them to communicate to each other. Prior to this assignment, the VMs cannot talk to anything other than the serverless compute manager. And all of these resources are then assigned to a single customer, and we'll see more of the dedicated measures we put in place here to achieve workload security in just a minute. Moving on to the serverless compute plane, we talked in our last video about how we employ four layers of isolation to keep customer workloads secure, only leverage temporary short-lived tokens for any data access, and offer a strict process of decommissioning compute once it's no longer needed. Let's find out more about these layers of isolation. Whenever a customer spins up a new serverless compute resource, for example, a new SQL endpoint, we dedicate VMs to that workload for that customer. As these VMs are assigned, new VMs will be created to refill the pool of unallocated VMs. Each compute resource is restricted to a logical network boundary that only permits the VM um, of a compute resource to be accessed from other VMs in the same compute resource or control plane. The connection from the serverless compute plane to the control plane uses private connectivity, and the VMs only have private addresses. Network isolation is achieved using Azure Application Security Groups or AWS Security Groups, network policies, and local firewalls, which prevent inbound communications from external sources. These security groups also block all inbound internet traffic and limit it, only, um, limit it to only required outbounds, such as data movement via VPC endpoints or VNet service endpoints, NDP and DNS traffic, or hosted high meta stores. By restricting each compute resource to a logical network, removing public IPs, and not allowing ingress traffic, we add one uh, networking layers of, of security to your workloads. But that's not all. As we deploy the workloads themselves, we add further layers of security across the compute resources. We consider application, container, storage, and OS security for each workload, forming the foundation of Databricks' commitment to providing a secure and re reliable environment for even the most sensitive compute resources. These layers are also extensively tested by both our in-house offensive security team and external penetration testing companies such as IOActive to protect your data at all times. We secure the application deploys through guidelines or HD OWASP, um, um, such as OWASP during design and architecture. Follow secure coding standards um, with static application security testing and continuous log collection and monitoring for incidents response. As we deploy containers onto the compute, these run in low privilege mode to limit the system calls that could provide access outside of the container and use an isolated process namespace, isolated network namespace, and isolated file systems. Since this compute may have attached DPS volumes or local SSDs, we ensure that the storage is ephemeral, encrypted, and dedicated to the attached VMs. All storage is securely wiped once the compute resource is complete. As for the VMs themselves, a particular VM is dedicated to only a single compute resource, which belongs to only one customer workspace. It does not have access to any credentials that aren't required for that job. For example, the customer compute resource for one customer won't have credentials that would grant access to data from any other customer. Once a compute resource is no longer needed due to auto-termination, automatic uh, periodical restarts, or simply a user terminating their compute resource, everything is deleted, including any attached storage associated with the VMs and any local SSDs. Databricks compute resources are ephemeral and nothing remains of them in the compute um, in the compute in the compute plane when shut down. We hope that the second video in our serverless chapter answered more of your questions on how we secure um, our serverless services and compute for all, um, all of our customers and how we achieve full workload isolation across all um, serverless workloads. If you're looking for highly efficient, low maintenance, and secure compute, definitely try out our serverless offerings. Please check out our documentation for more information um, and also visit our Security and Trust Center for more details on how we protect the Databricks Data Intelligence Platform and how serverless is the simplest and most secure way to do so.
We will continue the series as we have more information to share around access to data from serverless compute and any new developments across our various serverless products. So please keep an eye out on our security best practices series. Thank you.